uh, Brian Parker here again. Uh, I've got, uh, I may call this uh, Arbitration Week. Um, we're going to talk about arbitration and five reasons you should avoid arbitration like the plague. Uh, number one, arbitration is arbitrary. What do I mean by that? You get an arbitrator ruling over your case that is probably not an attorney uh, and has any personal feelings about you or the case can rule just on those feelings alone. It's based on contract, not on the Constitution. Whereas if you're in court, you have a judge, let's say she doesn't like you or doesn't like the case, she has to follow the rules of evidence and the court rules. And, and those things are there to protect both her in her decision making, you in being decided against, and the other side, frankly. There's hard and fast constitutional rules that we've survived on for over 300 years, whereas arbitration, those are contract rules that you signed and all that nonsense that is not right or real or evidence will be held against you, including the arbitrator's feelings about you. So uh, advantage court, arbitration loses on that one. Number two, you lose your rights to appeal. Evidence is an important thing. Everything is hearsay unless there's an exception. That's why it's called an exception. With arbitration, everything comes in. There's no hard and fast rules under the federal or state rules of evidence. And by the way, the arbitrator is being flown into your district or is doing this on Zoom and may not even be an attorney. Whereas with a court, you have a, an attorney, a judge, she knows what she's doing. She knows the rules of your district. You may have elected her, or you have that right to take her down off the bench. You have none of those rights for arbitration. So, boom, that's an advantage for the court, too. Stay with court. Don't go to arbitration. Number three, you lose your defenses with arbitration. One of the main defenses, and if you're a disciple of my channel and my membership site, you'll know that most debt collection cases, and now we're going into creditor cases, don't have the proper proof or assignments to bring what they claim is evidence attached to their lawsuit into the case. Ev simple evidence rules will eliminate the hearsay nature of the false documents they're trying to bring in. With arbitration, you signed a contract and it all goes under what's called um, the Federal Arbitration Act. Essentially, the governing law and rules of most arbitration contracts are the following. Shazam! I'll read it. This arbitration agreement is governed by the Federal Arbitration Act. Arbitration must proceed only, in the case of AAA, with the American Arbitration Association. The rules of the arbitration will be those in this agreement and procedures of AAA. In other words, no evidence rules. Evidence is what the arbitrator says it is. You do not want to be in that place. Contract versus Constitution, Constitution it wins. In this case, because you lose your rights to eliminate bad evidence with arbitration, check mark on court, advantage court. Uh, I'll just read you a, a, a case in point. A federal court said in 2013, an arbitrator has substantial leeway to admit any evidence they find useful, even hearsay evidence. That goes against everything that we stand for. See number four. Number four reason why you shouldn't go through arbitration is because the thing moves along quickly to the advantage of the person that wants arbitration. And it's usually the person that created the rules, created the contract, and is paying for the arbitrator and the process. And that is the credit card company. If they want something, it's probably wrong. Your average arbitration agreement is the following, Shazam. And essentially, it, you lose everything when you go through arbitration. And in this case, if you look on my arbitration general agreement from a, an average credit card agreement, it specifically puts in bold letters, neither party will have the right to litigate the claiming court or have a jury try. Why would they want to eliminate constitutional rights? Also, discovery and appeal rights are limited in arbitration. So everything that's good about going to court, they want to eliminate and they put it in bold letters. Think about that. 
By the way, discovery is very important in winning these cases. Just the threat of discovery can win a settlement for you. Using your discovery rights, you have a right to discovery, you can find out the real basis of why somebody says you owe the money. And there's never really any proof of that. As you again, if you've seen all my um, videos, which are there basically saying the emperor's not wearing any clothes. Well, in arbitration, the, ar the, the emperor is completely naked and the arbitrator sees he or she is wearing a suit. The big problem with arbitration is, again, number four, it moves quickly. So you can have a judgment against you within three months, whereas with courts, sometimes it doesn't take, it takes three months just to get to the pretrial. And the pretrial says you can have discovery, you can do this, you can find out about the evidence against you. And along the way, you have rights to file a motion with court and our constitution to find out the genesis and the proof against you. That's our American way. We have a right to pick apart the evidence against us. Not so with arbitration. Again, think about why they specifically bolden in their arbitration agreement, you cannot litigate with the jury. You cannot have discovery rights. You cannot have appeal rights. Now, arbitration is looked upon as a quick way to resolve cases. In order for that to be quick, you don't have evidence glitches, as they say, meaning there's a piece of evidence coming you know is false, so you don't have the right to exclude it. It's basically arbitrary on the arbitrator to decide whether evidence comes in or not. Well, that also limits your appeal rights. So if, as you will see, there's something clearly wrong in the arbitration process you're involved in and you're losing, you can't appeal that. You lose the right to appeal. And one of the ways they do that is limit the amount of things that you can do inside the process to knock out evidence or knock out testimony. So if you can't have that be an issue, it can't be appealed. Whereas if you go to court and it's clearly false against you, you're allowed to appeal that. And you'll win if a group of individuals above the court you lost in sees what you see, which is there's clearly a problem here. Arbitration, it's final, the award is done. And now, within 21 days, they take a three-month procedure and put it into court within 20 days. You've got a judgment against you. So don't let any debt collector say, hey, this is an easy way to go and get this thing moving. Take it this way. With arbitration, you're always going to pay something. Why? Because most arbitrators do this thing. It's, it's called the King Solomon Rules. You cut the baby in half. They give this side something and this side something. You're going <laughs> to... Be giving a lot. Trust me, your something is going to be big. Whereas with court, you got a chance to knock out the whole thing, but really you have a chance to dictate what and how you want to settle the case and for what for. So number four, court clearly has the advantage over arbitration. And then finally, this is the killer. With arbitration, you pay. Sometimes in the arbitration agreement, it'll say, hey, well, pay you back, or if you, if you win or prevail, we may pay you back. There's never a hard and fast, you don't have to pay anything. So you pay hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars to be in a process that will quickly get a judgment against you with no evidence rules, no right to appeal, that is strictly arbitrary on the whims of the arbitrator, and you're paying. So there's no rules, no protection, no constitution, and frankly, even if a judge in a court of law does not like you, she still will follow the rules. That's the great nature of our system. We, we say the rules matter. It's, we are a nation of laws and then a nation of people. Those laws protect us and they protect us for hundreds of years. So if, an ar if a tech collector wants to put you in arbitration, these are five reasons why you should run head for the hills and try to get out of it. My next video, will be how to get out of it. I'll show you a motion file to put a case into arbitration and I'll show you how I responded in one. I'll try to have two of those up for you on my membership site, uh, collectionstoppersolutions.com. But uh, as far as number five is concerned, why would you want to pay for something with crappy rules, an outcome you're not gonna like, that you can't appeal with no real judge, it's some guy flown in from Rhode Island and no constitution, the bedrock of our life, and why America is such a great place. This is almost un-American to 
go to arbitration. Just treat it like the plague. Uh, this is my opinion of 30 years of doing this stuff, all right? So avoid arbitration like the plague. I thank you for watching. Uh, subscribe, like, love, whatever you want to do, you be you, and thank you very much.